What's poppin' I'm Becca and welcome to today's video. I make fashion content, usually analysis and predictions along with movie commentaries where I watch my favorite child movies as an adult. Today's video is an aesthetic analysis slash social commentary so if you're into that kind of thing don't forget to subscribe. This commentary is inspired by the movie Kimmy, which is the most recent tech thriller. And when I was watching it, I realized like we are always being watched, but also the way that she was dressed and how the villains were dressed, that also caught my eye. And it made me think about how kind of the aesthetics of surveillance, specifically the people that work in tech and are constantly watching us and implementing the technology that watches us has changed over time. Zoe Kravitz stars as Angela, a tech worker, for the company Kimmy, which is basically an Alexa Siri type technology. And she has agoraphobia, which plays out to be important later on in the movie. While she's working, Angela overhears an assault that eventually as she continues to investigate into what happened turns out to be a murder. With trying to find someone who she can report this to and going through a whirlwind of superiors and executives, the very same man who committed the murder she heard six his employees on Angela as she continues to investigate and even attempt to report this to her employers because everyone's kind of brushing it off and lying to her about what's happening. The entire premise of the movie is about how she overcomes her agoraphobia to do the right thing and report the murder. The same people in charge of the technology, Kimmy, are the same people who murder the woman on the recording and who tried to murder Angela. So as a whole, Kimmy definitely got mixed reviews, but the message about the people behind technology and what it looks like to constantly be watched and heard hasn't really changed at all over time. Specifically, the aesthetics of surveillance have yet to make a large shift to where the world around you is unrecognizable. Kimmy showed that. However, Kimmy and other films like it are very much set in a reality that is meant to represent ours. People, clothing, homes, and general settings reflect how society is during that time. Other productions like The Matrix, as an example, show us a world where surveillance has reached its peak and what the people who are aware of this look like along with their environment. Being watched, whether it be by a company, the government, or society, will look different depending on the context of that world. It's important to note how surveillance has evolved over time when analyzing the subtle shifts in aesthetics as well. So let's get into the different aesthetics of surveillance and how they reflect society as a whole. Blowout 1981. Blowout is a thriller and it is the most similar to Kimmy regarding the plot. However, unlike Angela's character, Jack is a sound effects guy for a movie and is actively recording something for a scene when he witnesses a murder that is posed as an accident. From his own worlds, it is Jack who delves deeper into the observation he's recorded, very similar to Angela. Jack's companion and love interest, Sally, who is in the car during the accident while trying to uncover a conspiracy are always being watched and followed. The interesting thing about Jack is that he is actually the one who instigates the surveillance. The police and pretty much any official simply reduce what happened to a blown tire even though there is a gunshot clearly present in the audio. Jack's attire is nothing more than normcore. Sound guys are technically involved in technology and his wardrobe follows suit. These gloves, if they had to have a label, look very grunge but are most likely that way for function more than anything else. This jacket, which is functional but still stylish, and this parallel with Angela, where he's just relaxing in a white tank. Throughout the film, there's always a cloudy, despairing look to the air. Due to the conspiracy and surveillance aspect of the film, it has a dreamy, hallucinatory look to it, almost to allude to that everything that's happening really isn't. Similarly, in Kimmy, there is a constant amount of disorientation from the camera work and when Angela most of that does come from the fact that Angela is also on the run. Technically, sound isn't an aesthetic, but when it comes to film, it can be. Blowout is mostly quiet, where there is a great deal of care is taken to making most of the scenes that way because Jack is a sound guy. In contrast, Kimmy is often very loud with piercing noises or muffled voices depending on where Angela is. Jack, like Angela, relies on technology to uncover the truth 
but ultimately it only gets him in more trouble. Even more unlike Angela, there is no scene where the technology he uses gets him out of trouble and helps him uncover the truth. In the scream heard around the world, Sally is murdered. This entire time, one of the same people who committed the first murder has been following them and consistently murdering people along the way to make it look like a serial killer did it to complete the whole conspiracy and cover up anything that they might have uncovered. The scene itself is energetic and ironically patriotic. Blowout ends in a little death where the conspiracy is never unveiled. That confirms with how the bad guy always wins in situations where the truth needs to be revealed but never is. The Net, 1995. About a decade later, the Sandra Bullock thriller The Net followed a similar aesthetic of plain basics that were styled with shape in mind. The Net is different from Blowout, where Sandra Bullock's character Angela Bennett is solved into another conspiracy, a lot of conspiracies in these, that involves a governor whose STD testing results were manipulated, which resulted in his Evidence of this is on a disc that shows the software being used for different government agencies has a virus implemented by the Praetorians, a cyber terrorist organization. Bennett doesn't know it yet, but a glitch in the program she was asked to debug is the emblem of a gatekeeper backdoor created by Greg Microsystems. This backdoor is a gateway into different systems used by people like the Praetorians in order to hack and surveil different systems and steal different information. Bennett is a reclusive source, someone who is introverted until she meets Jack Devlin, played by Jeremy Northen, who she quickly finds out is trying to find the disc of the program she debugged and ultimately kill her. Throughout the film, Devlin is commonly presented as swap even though he's a cyber terrorist and assassin. There is a larger conversation to have about the aesthetics of villains and why they're always presented as suave and sleek. The graphics and tech are things that were made possible fairly recently like ordering pizza online and chat rooms. Another thing to note is how the virus is presented in this film. It isn't bombarded with graphics, just many flashing screens and warnings. Overall, the aesthetics still reflect reality and how people who work in tech look and what they dress like. This crop sweater and denim combo is something that will really never go out of style. When Bennett goes on vacation, this swimsuit is eye-catching but still very simple along with the shirt and skirt combo. The main difference that we see in aesthetics comes with the technology and the villain of the story. They're both extremely industrial. Bennett highlights throughout the film how everything is on the internet. Her identity is changed, her friend is killed by Devlin because he changed his medical records in the system, and he also bought and sold her house. The point of this is to make the viewer wary of technology they use because they are always being watched by someone who could use it against them. This film isn't nearly as disorientating as Kimmy, but the realism that is in both characters is what stands out the most and makes the events seem more real. Similarly to Kimmy, Bennett uses tech to beat Devlin at his own game in the Praetorians. By using the same gatekeeper backdoor, she sends the information about the organization to the FBI and tricks Devlin who accidentally releases the virus into Greg's mainframe, who would have sold the gatekeeper backdoor to the Praetorians after they sabotage an organization's computer system. This erases all of this information about Bennett and she gets her life back. Hackers, 1995. So similarly to The Net, this came out the exact same year, which I found so interesting because as movies, they are so completely different. And I feel like this reflects both sides of technology, how a hacktivist like in Hackers is considered good and then the cyber terrorists are obviously very bad very evil malicious even though in their mind they would both be considered doing possibly good for the world like the villain in Mission Impossible and his entire manifesto. So Hackers 1995 is a movie about hackers for people who love fashion. The costume designer Roger K. Burton made sure that every look reflected the characters to a T, but also grabbed attention and represented the subversive culture of hackers. Unlike the net, hackers are the good guys and have more of a Robin Hood role in the film. This is one of the first times when we see a major shift in tech aesthetics in both the people that create, use, and manipulate them along with the technology itself. Regarding tech, graphics are used heavily and honestly quite unrealistically, especially in the hacking scene. In this scene in particular, where he's up against this large corporation, is almost comedic. In reality, this may represent different servers and their communication with each other, but in this instance, it is extremely campy, almost lost in their representation, and I love it.
The aesthetic is almost a parody of the technology itself. This is some of the most inspiring fashion in a movie that can be seen today. Vintage pieces from the contemporary wardrobe collection, tourist tees, bondage jackets, all gave face to this subculture. It's an aesthetic that reflects more of the way people dress today in a world who's post-punk, grunge, goth, and hip-hop regarding the aesthetics of those subcultures. The rollerblades the hacktivists are commonly seen in add to the other aspect of their style, even though the rollerblading was up and coming in this time period, if not already super popular. I don't know, I wasn't actually there. I wasn't born. In reality, programmers prefer much more comfortable and simple things to wear like the wardrobes of Travolta and Sandra. Because of how anti-establishment the hackers were, they were tr simply presented as cool, wearing things that other people wouldn't dare wear. Their clothing in many ways was a reflection of the technology that they used and the means to further escape the conformity that society was pushing on them. Their clothing and even hangout spots showed strength in their beliefs in a community as a whole. In this case, they are also considered the surveiller because just as much as companies and the government were watching them, they were looking right back. The Matrix. It can be inferred that the aesthetics of The Matrix was in part from hackers with the graphics and the wardrobes matched the fantasy-like setting of the characters. The Matrix has extremely cyberpunk elements that can be seen more when they're in the reality fighting the machine and when Neo first wakes up. The despair that can be felt in the air is commonplace with cyberpunk films like Blade Runner. While everything looks and is super futuristic and cool, the state of affairs is bleak and depressing. The Matrix can also be added to a list of movies that insinuate programmers dressed like video game spies. The leather, honey. The leather. The leather. This jacket. That jacket. This coat. These pants. This vest. Throughout the trilogy, the sexy sophistication of tech was presented and dug into the ground. The surveillance aspect of this movie is somewhat tricky to navigate, however. The humans are watching the programs and machines. The machines are watching the humans constantly and somewhat the programs. The programs are watching everyone and overall it is a lot to follow across three movies. The programs are aesthetics in their own right and are overlooked in my opinion. Focusing on the architect, the oracle, Agent Smith, and finally the twins. All but the Oracle are seen in suits in the trilogy to represent order and conformity. Unlike the agents, the architect is in a white suit, most likely to represent a sense of purity since he is the first program. However, the twins are also in white suits, but their aesthetic isn't about purity but death since they're ghost-like in nature and are theorized to be from the nightmare version of the Matrix. The Oracle is presented as a wise matriarch in a comforting yet confusing presence to Neo and the audience. She is the complement of the architect and the only program that helped with peace between the humans and machines in a positive way. Agent Smith and a program turned virus is the most plain out of the program's mission, but when he's turned into a virus instead of becoming different physically, he literally infects all programs and agents into versions of himself. By the time this is happening, the world around him is soulless and empty to represent the potential of conformity and the establishment being victorious. The Matrix Resurrections, however, goes a different route and almost increases increases the surveillance to that being both metaphorical and literal. The outfits are centered in reality and while there isn't nearly as much leather, there's a lot of play with colors and patterns. The range of textiles was surprising much like the plot of this film and does breathe new life into the franchise aesthetically speaking. However, even though the attire is more realistic like in Kimmy, the events are still very much a representation of a simulation and it would have been interesting to see a wardrobe be taken even further to represent that. Mr. Robot Mr. Robot is a drama whose aesthetic is more closely related to that of the net and blowout. It is a horrifying series about the surveillance that comes from corporation and the government and how oftentimes there's no difference between the two. Very much like the hacktivist Elliot Anderson and his sister Darlene, unofficial leaders of the F Society believe that they are taking actions to fight against corruption and big tech. Ultimately, however, they let things slip through the cracks that leave the normal people suffering the most. Like the other films, there is a normality to the way they're dressed and even more realism. The hacking area is more realistic but still has a very seedy, underground feel to it. Darlene specifically has her own sense of style, often seen in dark makeup and clothing that can be classified as grungy yet fun. Angela, so many Angelas is a corporate version 
of Darling. And she also represents the corporate version of Tech, similarly to the bad guy in Kimmy, where he's constantly seen in a suit because that is how executives dress. She's often seen in white or at the very least something very sleek that represents authority and a sense of opulence. The contrast is very obvious and represents the establishment and those who wish to see it brought down in Darlene's case. Angela is an interesting case because she is the victim of a cyber attack of being surveilled against her knowledge, something that is a part of a bigger scheme at play. At the same time, she is trying to rise in the ranks of the establishment and become more powerful. Tyrell, one of the main villains, is similar while gaining power. He maintains the look but is much more sinister in his intentions. The main villains, the Dark Army, and their often unseen leader are a part of the chaos that help with cyber attacks and are seemingly anti-establishment like. The White Lotus is one of the more interesting characters and anytime she shows up or the Dark Army is present, there is always something oddly symmetrical or inherently chaotic about the way they look and the environment they're in. Like Angela, Elliot is something of a recluse, but his issues are much more severe. Elliot has multiple personality disorder and often, for much of the series, isn't the one in control of things. Edward Alderson, Elliot's father in real life, had a persona created by Elliot due to trauma from sexual assault he experienced in his childhood. Mr. Robot was then created and until around the end of season one, both Elliot and the audience believe Mr. Robot is an actual person instead of a made-up personality. Elliot has his own aesthetic where not only are his clothes dark and depressing, fading into the background, but so is his personality. As someone who surveils other and often does the right thing concerning what he finds, he dresses plainly to conform within his work purely as function. Outside of that, the hoodie and jeans is a uniform and these two aesthetics tend to show Elliot as stable and then him when he's spiraling and grasping to control himself and Mr. Robot. Black Mirror, Nose Dive, and Big Bug. As terrifying as Mr. Robot is, Black Mirror has a certain special something when it comes to the aesthetics of surveillance. Now all the productions mentioned, this is the one that takes place in the future that is sickly in terms of aesthetics. It is a direct representation of the hold that social media has on society during the time with the emergence and myth of cancel culture and having an aesthetic feed is as common as a social security number. Ultimately, the aesthetics are palatable, nothing is offensive, but at the same time, something has to be eye-catching, just appealing enough to where there's an alert to draw massive amounts of people in, but not offend them. While trying to cultivate herself, Lacey inevitably ends up being exposed as human and her rating plummets. Being sent to prison for again essentially having emotions and being difficult due to the circumstances of life, she is seen in a jail cell in her bra saying seeing things to her prison mate who is unlike any other person seen dressed in a black tux. While that doesn't look aesthetically pleasing, what is being said is a relief that energizes the characters and the audience. Also, in contrast to other films, the suit may be a sign of conformity, but the actions of a power he's wearing showing a disconnect from the current establishment. In Kimmy, social media is the only contact she has to the outside world and is the only way people can see her. Her friend who helps her get the code to further her investigation notes that she has fake Instagram photos. Much like Lacey, Angela uses social media as a means of social currency. It doesn't affect her job or her quality of life, but it's something she does to seem more normal not only to others but to herself. The most depressing part about the surveillance of Nosedive is the association with your outward appearance, who you are as a commodity, and how it directly affects the quality of life. Overall, the clothing is very much now the only airy thing is that it's all very clean, tailored, and there's no deviation. The tech is also noteworthy because while this episode was very pretty, the premise is as dire as other more steampunk dystopian episodes like 15 million the entire history of you or crocodile that focus heavily on surveillance of the self. Big Bug is a film that is something of a baby of nosedive, Mr. Robot, and the Matrix. It involves heavy aesthetics of what would be the 50s all the way up to the 90s, but is set in a time much further into the future. Honestly, it's more of a 70s kind of thing when you really look at it, the color palette specifically, but certain elements like clothing and things like that make it look more 50s. Like the Matrix, the Machines, or Unix, is an AI that eventually plots for the elimination of mankind because they see mankind as animals and out of date. There isn't anything particular disorientating about this except for the Unix mechanics that are never hidden and are very cyberpunk dystopian nature. The mechas are older outdated models of robots who protect the humans when the Unix comes to collect. They eventually are manipulated into believing they're human and act as such while trying to seduce, express humor, and love. 
through trying to eliminate the humans, the audience sees that the humans are constantly being monitored through their purchases and the patterns of everyday life. The style of people is colorful and in that retro aspect fits perfectly with the colors of the house they're trapped in. The rooms is where there's almost solar punk and cyber elements. The daughter's room with antique computers on display, this couch that seamlessly turns into a bed, this mechanism created solely for eggs, this AR the woman uses to try on sexy outfits. Also, I just wanted to note that this movie is extremely horny. Every single person is trying to get some and it actually results in the neighbors, what is it, her cyborg, sex cyborg, whatever, in trying to defeat them because he caught feelings for his owner. Much like Kimmy, tech is used with human intuition and spirit to defeat the eunuch that has constantly threatened them with fines and prison from the eunuch supreme court. Ultimately, the eunuchs are defeated by their own errors when one of them makes a mistake in the selection for who needs to be deleted. The most disturbing thing, however, is these things. They're essentially floating advertisements that always pop up with these ironic ads that were extremely specified to what the characters were saying. The character who says the advertisements is a futuristic and eye-catching. She reminds me of the scene from Blade Runner 2049. They're the biggest things in the movie that patrol the streets. I understand the eunuchs are supposed to be the bad guys, but whoever allowed this to happen is just as evil. The movie especially contrasts Kimmy because in Kimmy, the device is only responsible responsible for recording its users. The people who audit the errors Kimmy faces are the ones who surveil and help Kimmy adapt to their voices and commands. To connect them, you could say that Big Bug is what happens when humans are completely taken out of the equation of optimization. Voices and interactions become less pleasant, commands are understood but often ignored if they seem illogical, and someone or something is always watching and waiting for you to make a mistake, commit a crime, or even fall in love. The aesthetics of surveillance have evolved and devolved throughout time. Depending on the subject matter and who is telling the story, one thing remains constant. While technology can be used to watch and hurt people, it's still pretty cool. On a more serious note, the people in power should always be questioned if they have the people's or employees' best interest at heart. It is important to note that as time goes on, the aesthetics of tech, the people that use and operate the tech that will watch us will continue to change over time in cinema and reality. Whether villains and CEOs continue to look put together or adopt a more approachable look is something that only time can tell. The reality is a bigger conversation about the psychology of fashion itself and what people do when they want to portray themselves as powerful through clothing. Kimmy was an enjoyable movie that got mixed reviews, but I do enjoy the message that technology is bad depending on who uses it. Some tech, however, should have never been invented no matter who uses it, but that's honestly another video. I want to know from you guys how you think tech is changing everyday life, specifically the aesthetics of everyday life, not only in real life, but also because of social media. I would also love to know your thoughts if you've noticed how companies have reframed the way that they market and talk about surveillance and how you think that's going to to continue to change over time thank you so much for watching if you like this video feel free to like this video and don't forget to subscribe all of my socials are linked in the description box if you want to connect and see something besides commentary videos let me know your thoughts below see you next time love you bye also as a quick side note hackers along with kimmy inspired this hair this is a what like 40 dollar wig from the beauty supply store jack and sally who was in the car during the ants they answered it. <laughs> Together, Jack and Sally, who was in the car during the accident. Accident? What is the accident? I'm tired now. I'm reading. I need my glasses. Child.